Welcome to Stable Sort. The problem that we're going to discuss in this episode asks to partition a set of positive integers into k subsets, such that the sum of each subset adds up to the same amount. For example, suppose the input set is this and k equals 3. Then the function should return the following three subsets. Note that the numbers of each subset add up to 8. So the function doesn't just return true or false based on whether it's possible to create k partitions or not, but actually creates those partitions. Also, we assume that these are multisets that allow duplicate values. In other words, the numbers are not required to be unique. You may recall that last week's episode was about a very similar problem. Except there, the requirement was to partition into exactly two subsets, the sums of which had to be equal as closely as possible. That one is a little bit of a simpler problem, so I recommend watching that episode if you haven't done so already. The link is in the description. It turns out that if the number of partitions is three or more, the problem becomes strongly NP-complete, meaning no pseudo-polynomial algorithm could exist. This was proven by Gary and Johnson in their 1979 publication. So a function that checks every single permutation of subsets is really our only option. The first step in solving this problem is to add up all the integers in the input array and divide by k, the number of partitions. This is going to be our target value for each of the partitions. Of course, if that number is not divisible by k, or if there's some simple test that we could run that shows that this won't work, then we can immediately hold right then and there. But barring those special easy cases, we then create an array of size k, initialized to the target value, which in our example is 8. Then we'll be picking a value from the input array, decreasing one of the targets by that value, and repeating until the target reaches 0. If it does not reach 0, we backtrack, undoing the previous operations, and try a different value from the input array. This process is repeated until all of the targets are reduced to zero, or no solution is found having exhausted all of the possible combinations of subsets. Here is an example implementation written in Java. Along with the original array of input values, we pass in the index to this array, as well as the previously mentioned array of targets. The last variable p is a list into which we'll be storing the completed partitions. So the function is going to try to place the value from the array at index i into one of the partitions, which is equivalent to reducing the corresponding target by that value. We don't know which target to use, so there's a for loop to try each one. The heart of the algorithm is the main decision point. If the rest of the array from index i plus 1 is possible to partition with the reduced target, then we keep the value in the current partition. Otherwise, we need to backtrack and try placing it into some other partition. This is a funny algorithm because there's no explicit for loop to iterate over the values in the input array. Instead, the recursive step is what moves the array index forward. So when we call this function with i equals 0, we're essentially asking, is it possible to place the first value into the first partition? If yes, then we place it there and we hold at this point, because the only way to have answered this question was to reduce the target value, recurse in, and also answer the question if it's possible to place the second value into one of the partitions which leads to further and further recursive steps. The running time of this algorithm is a little tricky to analyze, but let's take a crack at it. The for loop may execute for however many partitions there are. If the number of partitions is three, for example, then we get a recurrence relation of t of n equals three multiplied by t of n minus one. Then we can say that t of n minus 1 equals 3 multiplied by t of n minus 2. Substituting that into the first equation, we get t of n equals 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by t of n minus 2. 
unrolling this formula further leads to exponential running time of order 3 to the power of n. But the number of partitions does not have to be some small constant. In fact, it could be as large as n. In that case, the recurrence relation is t of n equals n multiplied by t of n minus 1, which leads to running time of order n factorial. Clearly, this function won't work for most practical applications, but hopefully this was a useful illustration of how to go about calculating the running time of a given function. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please click that thumbs up button if you did, and thank you for watching.